According to the New York Times headline, U.S. officials expect bird flu to return in the fall. It goes on to say U.S. agriculture officials say it is highly probable that the violent avian flu viruses that have hit U.S. poultry operations hard in recent weeks will return next fall when bird populations migrate south, potentially spreading the viruses into new regions of the country. Official with the Agriculture Department's Animal, Plant, and Health Inspection Service said the H5N2 virus, along with two other highly pathogenetic strains of bird flu, would probably be passed among birds at breeding grounds in the northern United States and Canada through the summer. The strains are difficult to control, say scientists, in part because wild birds can carry the viruses without appearing to be sick. The statement marks a shift in tone in the agency's assessment of the likelihood of a renewed outbreak tied to fall migration. More than 15 million commercial birds nationwide have died or are expected to be killed in the current outbreak, and exports of U.S. poultry and eggs have slowed sharply. The key concern has been whether the viruses will become epidemic in the nation's wild bird population, eventually spreading them to the East Coast and down into the heart of the nation's chicken broiler production states in the South and Southeast. With that on the backdrop, I think it's important for us to let Dr. Scott Johnson speak to us. He made a DVD with the Prophecy Club we're offering today. We call it Avian Flu Killer of Millions. Now, for the last 13 years, Dr. Scott has been a medical misinformation investigator and has been writing a health newsletter for five years. He specializes in clinical nutrition and patient education. For 12 years, Scott has been researching the plans of the New World Order to depopulate the planet. In other words, they're not just trying to kill birds, they're after you too. Not having this startling information could cost you your life. Learn the evil plans about the avian flu and how to survive it. Dr. Johnson explains the deadly traits of this virus, its origins, and the fact that it is probably man-made, man-released, and man-manipulated to be transmissible by air, human to human. Did you hear that? Yes, it is deadly, but the laws surrounding it may kill more than the virus. He explains that laws are already on the books to force you to receive a method of of their choice to track who has been vaccinated and the microchip that is at the top of their preferred list. You could be forced to leave your home, city, job, all possessions, and move to a place of their choosing, such as a barbed wire concentration camp. The virus is bad, but what could be done in the name of the law to get rid of the virus may be worse. Now, in this DVD that we're offering, the topics are Proof the Illuminati telegraphs their punches prior to cataclysmic events. While avian flu is the perfect vehicle for world depopulation, what the globalist elite are planning for Americans. Why the avian flu could be a repeat of the Spanish flu of 1918 that killed millions. Vaccinations, injectable microchips, and the avian flu. And finally, Project BioShield. Kill rates, food shortages, forced vaccinations and evacuations, and quarantines leading to concentration camps. Now let's go listen to the audio of the DVD. And you can get this DVD, normally valued at $30, available today for a gift of just $20, and we're going to offer you free shipping too. It's called Avian Flu, Killer of Millions. You get it by calling 785-266-1112. I know you've already got that in your cell phone, 785-266-1112. Avian flu, killer of millions. Now let's go listen to Dr. Scott Johnson. Oil storm debuted on June 5, 2005 on the FX network, less than three months before Katrina struck Louisiana on August 29, 2005. So now we're only talking a movie that actually debuted just three months before Katrina hit. It wasn't years, it was only three months. This movie accurately telegraphed the same scenario that happened with Hurricane Katrina in a documentary style footage. Oil Storm explored the aftermath of a Category Plus 5 hurricane slamming into Louisiana, crushing the city of New Orleans, thereby crippling the pipeline for refined oil that is in Port Fuchon, consequently disrupting the flow of oil in, in the United States, which is making the gas prices skyrocket. This is their, they have a, their own website. You can go up there and look at the trailers and all the things that they have on the website. Uh, I don't believe the movie's been released to buy yet, but yes, they've had a website up there for quite a while. 
ABC plans bird flu thriller for May. This is 418, Fatal Contact, Bird Flu in America. This is set to air May 9th, so this coming Tuesday. Reports Michael Starr at the New York Post. This movie stars Stacey Keach and Ann Cusack in a tale of worst case scenario if the bird flu virus was transmitted by humans in America. So co-producer Jonathan Verno said, quote, we've gone to great effort to make sure the film is accurate. This just ran today. I just got this. Uh, USA Today, quote, in the movie Fatal Contact, a U.S. businessman visiting China is infected and carries the deadly virus back via jetliner to the USA. Now again, we had talked a little bit before about being able to actually carry this stuff. There was a movie called Outbreak, which uh, came out before, um, I believe Dustin Hoffman was in it, and in that movie, it was also spread via jetliner, in part, in part. So before the movie ends, riots erupt, armed mobs try to hijack vaccines, and authorities predict that up to 350 million people will die worldwide. Now remember, Juna Verno said she's went to great lengths to make sure that this movie's accurate. So again, this is what they're telegraphing to us. We need to pay attention to these things. That's the actual scene from the movie there at the bottom. So the motivation for this is also to see how much prior knowledge the Illuminists can give away so that they can gauge the kind of public outcry that will be generated. For the most part, the signal that's been sent to the globalist elite is that Americans are apathetic because there's really been virtually no public outcry in regard to the information that I'm bringing you this night. Now, in their eyes, this would be the green light to implement their draconian or evil plans further. This is another reason they do this. Satan's very good at what he does. And here's the, here's the problem. Apathy. Now, I'm not talking to the people watching this DVD or the people here tonight. Obviously, you, you've, you've been motivated to seek this information out. But for the most part, the average American suffers from a high level of apathy. If we could put a caption over this picture, it would, it would be the silence is deafening. These people just don't you know, care because it hasn't really affected them yet. They're going to wait you know, until the walls are caving in in order to do anything. And then it'll be too late, really. Edmund Burke said, quote, all that is required for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Edward Everett Hale, son of Nathan Hale, said, quote, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. What I can do, I should do. And what I should do, by the grace of God, I will do. So we're the body of Christ as Christians, and we all have calling, purposes, things that the Lord lays on our heart. Do whatever the Lord's calling you to do. Um, the Bible talks about where it gives reference to, can the eye say to the hand, depart of me, I have no need of you. So we're all important in the body of Christ. So while the globalist elite are accustomed to putting the entire world on notice as to what they're planning for them, they typically do not communicate the exact times that their plans will be carried out, and they do not want the motivation behind their agenda exposed. John 3.19 says, quote, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, Jesus Christ, and men loved darkness rather than light. These men, these people love darkness. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Ecclesiastes also talks about because sentence is not executed speedily, they do these things because they think they're getting away with something. But they're not getting away with anything. David Rockefeller, founder of the Trilateral Commission, in an address to the Trilateral Commission in June of 1991, said the following. This is a picture of David Rockefeller. Quote, we are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine. Now, it's a, it's a funny thing. In researching this presentation, I've found that Many of these globalist elite that I'm going to be throwing up pictures on tonight, just about every one of them has a Time Magazine cover. And this is one of the publications he's giving credit to. He's saying the New York Times, Washington Post, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings, meaning David Rockefeller, and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. Remember, they love darkness. They don't like bright lights on their, what their agenda is. But the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world's government. It's getting more flagrant and more obvious, some of the things that they're doing. And again, they do that to gauge public outcry many times also. Here's Donald Rumsfeld um, flashing us the Cornudo sign, which means Hail Satan. Avion flu drug and the Rumsfeld connection. The drug company that created Tamiflu 
being touted as the only effective weapon against the spread of avian flu, has a little publicized link to the Bush administration. Donald Rumsfeld was the company's chairman. Rumsfeld served as head of Gilead Sciences, Inc. from 1997 until he became Bush's Secretary of Defense in 2001. Gilead licensed the drug to Roche for marketing, and Roche announced Tamiflu's first approval in 1999. Donald Rumsfeld makes $5 million killing on bird flu drug. This is a headline that ran in the Independent UK. Quote, Donald Rumsfeld has made a killing out of the bird flu. The U.S. Defense Secretary has made more than $5 million in capital gains from selling shares in the biotechnology firm that discovered and developed Tamiflu, the drug being bought in massive amounts by the governments to treat a possible pandemic of the disease. Interesting. Sales of Tamiflu are reportedly projected to reach $1.1 billion this year. But Tamiflu may not be the any flu panacea it's cracked up to be. Reported by Fortune magazine, recent studies have shown that Tamiflu may have lost much of its effectiveness against avian flu. Eight of ten victims in Vietnam died despite getting the drug. Okay, so let's do the math. It has a 56% kill rate right now before it's even mutated. These people that got Tamiflu had an 80% kill rate. That's even worse than the average of 56% when they took Tamiflu. This is their own math. So many are becoming highly suspicious of the continued touting of the drug. I mean, I think that's fair to say that. Dr. Marsha Angel, Harvard senior medical lecturer and former editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, this woman has about as high of uh, credentials as you could have, Harvard senior medical lecturer. She is the former editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals there are. The reason she's the former medical is because the, her conscience got the best of her when she saw what was going on in the medical profession. She stepped down from that position and she wrote the book, quote, The Truth About Drug Companies. In that book, she states, in 2002, the combined profits for the 10 Fortune 500 drug companies was $35.9 billion. Now, let's, I'm going to go through this a little slow. There's 500 companies. Out of those 500 companies, 10 are pharmaceutical companies. Their profits were $35.9 billion. This figure is greater than all the combined profits for all the other 490 leftover companies of the Fortune 500 put together. So 10 companies have the majority of the profit and they're all pharmaceutical companies. That's a picture of Dr. Angel. In reference to the pharmaceutical industry, Dr. Angel states, quote, now primarily a marketing machine to sell drugs of dubious, meaning doubtful, benefit. This industry uses its wealth and power to co-opt every institution that might stand in its way, including the U.S. Congress, the FDA, academic medical centers, and the medical profession itself. Now again, this is coming from a very, very high-ranking medical doctor. So besides population reduction, the financial motivations for the globalists are crystal clear. They have many different agendas wrapped in this. The FDA, this is another uh, headline that ran out of Washington, the Associated Press. FDA looks into pediatric Tamiflu deaths. Federal health advisors are looking into the deaths of 12 Japanese children who took Tamiflu. An update by the FDA staff also includes reports of 32 neuropsychiatric events associated with Tamiflu, all but one experienced by Japanese patients. The problem with drugs is they all have side effects. And evidently, according to what I, they're, they're releasing here, Tamiflu has a boatload, including delirium, hallucinations, convulsions, and encephalitis. And this is the main thing that's being touted for the avian flu. Here's an article that ran in Science Daily out of London, 12305. It was entitled, Tamiflu Useless for Avian Flu. This is an electron black and white microscopic uh, slide of um, the avian flu. Medical experts are stating categorically that the Roche pharmaceutical wonder drug Tamiflu is useless in treating or combating the avian flu virus. This is what the medical experts are saying. Dr. Van of the Center for Tropical Diseases in Hanoi, a Vietnamese doctor with experience in treating avian flu, which is something we really don't have in the States, he actually has experience in this. He says Tamiflu had no, or she, I'm sorry, she says Tamiflu has had no effect on patients suffering from H5N1 bird flu. No effect. We place, she says, quote, we place no importance on using this drug on our patients. She reportedly told the London Sunday Times. If anybody would know, she would. Quote, Tamiflu is really only meant for treating ordinary type A flu. It was not designed to combat avian, uh, H5N1, avian flu. 
So this statement comes in the face of recent announcements by several nations, including Britain and the United States, that, stock, that are stockpiling doses of the drug, Tamiflu, as a future safeguard against the mutation of the H5N1 virus. Well, if it's not working now, how is it going to work when it mutates and it's even more virulent? The Bush administration is reportedly spending several hundreds, hundred millions of dollars in stocking Tamiflu. Follow the money. Project BioShield, medical martial law and forced vaccinations. Here is a picture of President Bush signing Project BioShield into law. On July 21st, 2004, he did this. It was a $5.6 billion law. Now, under Project BioShield, the government can impose mandatory vaccinations on Americans while simultaneously declaring martial law based on any emergency, real or imagined. So that doesn't sound too good. There's my source, whitehouse.gov. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson said, quote, it's not the function of our government to keep the citizen from falling into error. It is the function of the citizen to keep the government from falling into error. There's the reference, a picture of uh, Supreme Court Jackson. This is from the Military Vaccine Resource Directory. There's a website. The term biofascism describes the merging of, number one, the military medical establishment, two, the FDA and public health bureaucracies, and three, pharmaceutical medical cartels. So just like the end times we're moving into, a lot of these things are merging into one unified, cohesive system. What will American citizens do when nurses accompanied by armed police and soldiers come to their door and order them to be vaccinated? Since 9-11, federal and state laws have been changed to now allow for this very thing. The American people do not understand that the bioterrorism legislation passed by Congress since 9-11 makes the Patriot Act look tame by comparison. Mandatory vaccination under an emergency declaration can be based simply on a potential threat of bioterrorism. Remember, real or imagined. Already the Pentagon is demanding that American military anthrax vaccine refusers submit DNA samples that are, to, that are to be placed in the FBI's national database of criminals. These are just military people that refuse the anthrax vaccine. Now they're in the FBI's database of criminals. This is the de facto criminalization of vaccine refusal. And because of the emergency authorities enacted in 2004 Project BioShield, all American civilians can now also be subjugated to the same erosion of their civil rights. Did you know former President Clinton quietly signed Executive Order 13139 on September 30th, 1999? Now this order requires military personnel to receive experimental vaccines not approved by the FDA, and denies the soldiers the right to refuse or to even be provided with informed consent of what they're receiving. This is the reason that they can place their DNA in a national criminal database because of this executive order that was signed. So again, this is a pretty worst case scenario. They're getting vaccines, um, they don't have any right to refuse them, and they, they can't even be provided informed consent of what they're receiving. It's unbelievable. Now, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, quote, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I didn't come here to spread the fear of man tonight. We need to look to the Lord. The fear of the Lord is where we need to look to. Psalm 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. So these are ver verses of Scripture that regarding especially the times we're moving into would be good to hide in our heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So it's very important to, for scripture memorization to take place in regard to um, being able to draw upon that in the times that we're moving into. King James. Northcom prepares for possible pandemic. This is from their website, Northcom. U.S. Department of Defense announcement. U.S. Northern Command recently hosted 40 representatives from more than 40 international, federal, and state agencies for an exercise designed to determine what governmental actions, including military support, would be necessary in the event of an influenza pandemic in the United States. This is their little logo for NORTHCOM. Dave Wilkins, the NORTHCOM exercise facilitator, said, quote, we will be taking guidance and requests from other agencies, such as Department of Homeland Security, via Secretary of Defense. So what I'm trying to show you here is that the highest echelons of the military of our government are now really putting together a very coordinated effort in order to 
deal with this potential avian flu outbreak. There's their website for NORTHCOM, their headquarters. This was uh, a slide. There was a bird flu summit in Washington, D.C. of February 27th and 28th of this year. And representatives from Homeland Security, Department of, of Defense, Northrop gunmen, who are battle management specialists, and the MITRE Corporation, who are command control communications and intelligence for the Department of Defense. All these organizations were there and were in attendance at this bird flu summit. Now, if you were to go to the bird flu summit, it was a $2,000 admission fee just to get in the door, just general attendance for a two-day summit. They didn't want people like you and I there. The bird flu summit was presented by Newfields. Newfields' objective is bringing together experts representing all regions of the globe and a variety of industries to share new ideas. This is the goal of Newfields Homeland and World Security Expo. So this is the organization putting this on and they're all about homeland and world security. And they're bringing all these high levels of government in order to coordinate this. There's their website. And another website you can get some more information about that subject on. Now there was an MD that went there um, that came back and reported on actually what happened there. Her name was Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Quoting from her article, she says, quote, at the summit, UN Senior Coordinator for Avion Human Influenza and Special Representative to the World Health Organization, Director General David Nabarro, who we've heard his name before now, he repeatedly used confirmatory language regarding the arrival of the pandemic. This is a, another picture of David Nabarro. At one point, he commented that systems need to be put in place so that they, they can be readily activated when the pandemic starts. Without hesitation, Nabar repeated, quote, note that I said when, not if, the pandemic arrives. Now that's a really strong statement coming from an insider from the United Nations and the World Health Organization. She goes on to say, at the risk of sounding overly suspicious, it sounds like the outcome has been predetermined. And this is the me medical doctor that went to the uh, seminar. There's the link to that story. Now, it's also appropriate at this point to mention that David Nabarro is also the World Health or Organization's Executive Director for Sustainable Development. Now again, when we hear the word sustainable, this is one of those um, United Nations, New Age, Mother Earth buzzwords, meaning in order for the world to be sustainable, we have to depopulate it massively. And that's why that globe is up there where, where we have sustainable development around it, because it's about depopulation. So it's kind of like the fox guarding the hen house. If you've got David Nabarro in charge of the sustainable development, he's also the one that's coordinating at the highest levels all of the thing in regard to the bird flu. So Psalm 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth, encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Psalm 91, 4 and 6, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth the noonday. Now, at the start of Psalm 91, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Stan is going to get into a presentation at the end. I would highly encourage you listen to Christian, non-Christian, because he's going to show you what the secret place is of the Most High, because that's how we appropriate the Lord's protection. Very important we understand that. Now, Dr. Joseph M. Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister, this is a picture of him, he says, quote, the lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. Makes sense. And thus, by extension, the truth becomes the greatest enemy of the state. Now, the Bible says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So again, this is an absolute contradictory statement to the Word of God. This is from Washington Post. Flu plan counts on public cooperation. The federal government unveiled a massive pandemic influenza plan that would fight an outbreak with tools, including surveillance of air travelers, rationing of antiviral drugs, imposing community-wide snow days, to keep people at home and aggressively controlling rumors to prevent panic. Well, I would be one of the first ones they would come after because they would not allow these types of gatherings to take place once this happened. So I really praise the Lord that I had the opportunity to actually come here prior 
to an avion flu outbreak because if it would have happened, I found out about this back in January that I was going to be speaking. But I was asking the Lord to give me enough time so I could actually bring this where I could actually present it to you. Another article reads, bird flu pandemic may force countries to shut down, says UN official. Again, David Nabarro said yesterday there was a danger of panicked countries closing their borders, withdrawing diplomats and operating a general lockdown as soon as the disease began to spread. This uh, ran in the New York Times. Bush plan shows the U.S. is not ready for a deadly flu. A 381-page plan. Now, I've seen so many of these plans lately. I mean, they just keep coming out with these 100-page plans over and over. They've got several of them now, layered. But this one's a 381-page plan developed by the Bush administration to deal with a possible outbreak of pandemic flu. It specifies specific ways that local and state governments, hospitals, and healthcare workers should prepare now for the eventual pandemic for, by, for instance, drafting legal documents now that would justify quarantining thousands and using the military to enforce it. So now we're looking at a case where we've got the government, the military, now working with the healthcare workers in a big coordinated effort to implement mass quarantine, forced vaccinations, things of this nature. The plan details responsibilities of top health officials in each phase of the spreading pandemic, starting with planning and surveillance efforts. Remember, they talk a lot about surveillance in regard to the avian flu and then ending with coordination with the Department of Defense. Now on February 1st, 2006, in Nashville, Tennessee, President Bush was quoted saying, quote, we've got to have more detention space, okay? That was from PRN Newswire out of Washington. And KBR, a subsidiary of Halliburton, is more than willing to accommodate as KBR has been awarded a $385 million Homeland Security contract to build more U.S. detention centers because there's already 600 plus. That came out of Market Watch. Now, many of you probably know that Dick Cheney was the CEO of Halliburton, uh, but he's actually making more money now, even though he's not the CEO. I'm going to interrupt the broadcast right there, but I do encourage you to call 785-266-1112. Just make a donation to help us with radio. Or if you'd like to have Avian Flu Killer of Millions, that is available today for a gift of $20 and you get free shipping if you call today. 785-266-1112. That particular offer is not available on the internet. You gotta call 785-266-1112. Avian Flu Killer of Millions. Normally $30. Today available for a gift of just $20 and you get free shipping. 785-266-1112. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your regular monthly support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Yes, you can still get the two DVDs by Michael Snyder, Prepare for the Economic Collapse, World War III, and the Regathering of the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel for a gift of $50. However, the best deal is get the April gift offer, which includes the last four speakers having six DVDs, a value of $180 for a gift of just $90. In addition to Michael Snyder's two DVDs, you get Standing for the Lord, which tells the amazing story of how God got Christine Wyke past two key entry doors and two checkpoints to proclaim Jesus is Lord during Muslims worshiping Allah in a Christian church. Then in Prophecies and the Bible Codes, Jonathan Wright is the only Christian that is researching Bible prophecy in the Bible Codes. He's found amazing information presented in over 100 charts in this triple DVD set. So that would be six DVDs over the last four speakers at the Prophecy Club in the April gift offer, valued at $180 for a gift of just $90. Call 785-266-1112 and ask for the April gift offer or go to prophecyclub.com. That's the April gift offer, four speakers, six DVDs, valued at $180 for a gift of just $90. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. Order today. 